Today we're going to be talking about grid backgrounds. Make sure to download the preset down below. So inside of Premiere Pro, I have a 9x16 sequence ready to go. You can do Control N, and I'm just using the social media portrait preset that's already in your system. Now I'm going to go and find our project panel, and I can right click, go to new item, and do color mat. You can also hit the little sticky note here where it says new item, and do color mat that way. Premiere Pro is going to recognize the size of your sequence and the frames per second, and you can click OK. So the first step to this is to make the color code 45, 45, 45. Now I want to shout out Adobe Basics. This entire preset is based on that video. I added some goodies that I thought would be useful to you. So shout out to him. Go ahead and click OK, and we can label it. I'm going to do gray because that is what the color mat is. So I'm going to go ahead and drag it into our timeline. For our particular preset today, it's about 15 seconds long, so I'm going to drag it to that time. Now, I'll put my playhead at the beginning and go to your effects panel and hover over your cursor where it says effects, go to import, and then you are going to go and find where you downloaded the grid background. So I'll go to my downloads and there it is, grid background. Once you have it selected, hit open. All right, so now you should be able to type in grid and if it doesn't pop up, go ahead and save your project and reopen it. So there's our grid background. I'm going to click and drag it over. And now you should see this. It's ready to go, right? So if I go ahead and press play, this is from Adobe Basics, the preset. So what are we using here? We're using a grid, a ramp, some noise, and turbulent displays. So I went ahead and added a few other things. So let's go ahead and walk through this entire preset. I'm going to turn off turbulent displays for now and show you the basics. All right, we're going to open up grid. We're pretty much going to play with all of these parameters. So let's go ahead and walk through each of them. So anchor, you're going to be controlling the X and Y axis. So if I wanted to make an animation, let's slide left from right. So we'll do a keyframe at the beginning. I'll go forward in time and I'll move it to the right. So now we play it. Our grid is now sliding infinitely, right? Now let's say we wanted it to be a diagonal. In order to do that, I'm going to move our Y axis. So I can move it up, I can move it down, whatever you want to do. And now we can see both of those parameters working from the keyframes that we made. Pretty cool. Next is with slider. So by default, I have it in here. I think it's easy to control and to understand. So if you'll pay attention to the next parameter with, we can zoom in, which makes these, these equal grid boxes a little bit bigger, but nothing is changing, right? So we can zoom out, we can zoom out really, really far, and then we can zoom in. Okay, so that's what's happening there on width. Next is border. So these are the size of the lines. So if I were to bump these up, we can increase the size. And then if you wanted something really fine, I do like two or three is typically what I use. It's nice fine lines, but I'll put it back to five. So next is the opacity. You can crank that up and down. You'll see the lines kind of fade in and out. And then blending mode. We'll mess with this here in a second, but you can mess with the blending modes, put none. And now that shines our next effect through, which is ramp. So I'm going to put that back to overlay. Ramp is what we're seeing right now. So the first parameters is the start and end. The colors are pretty obvious. So black and green, we, that's where we see the green and we see black up here. So if I wanted to make this a little bit lighter, I could change this and go to, well, let's make it white. So now this is a little bit brighter up here. If we're looking at, I have a nine by 16 in this case, 1080 by 1920. So you see our rulers. The start of the ramp is at the 540 mark on the X axis. We can see that. Oh, it's right there, 540. And then it's also at zero. Oh, so it's starting right there. So if I drag this down, you'll see that our black color is now moving, right? So that's what's happening there. And then the exact opposite. So that's the start of our ramp and here's the end of our ramp. So I'll drag this up and now we can see our green kind of taking over the whole image and we can drag this back down too. That's what's happening there. Now a different look is this next one, ramp shape. So we'll do a radial ramp. And now it doesn't seem obvious what just changed, but if you go to the start of the ramp, we need to drag this down because it starts up here. So we drag this down, we can have that radial look happen right in the middle. We're gonna skip over ramp scatter and we're gonna do with blend with original. So blend with original, this goes to 100%, but what happens if we go to 100%? Our color map was gray, so if we go to 100%, oh, we're not blending at all. 
So if we crank it back down to say like 50, it's a little bit more prominent. 75 is a pretty nice number to stay in between, even if you're using a, a radial ramp or a linear ramp, right? I'm gonna put this back to zero. Okay, moving to the next one, noise. This one's super easy. So noise just adds some texture. So if I zoom in, let's say 800%, we see that there's this black and white noise. We can also have some color noise. That's what this is, use color noise. So if I do that, now we have some red, some green, some blues added, right? So if I zoom out, it's real subtle, right? So I'll zoom back in and we can bump this up to where it is just menacing. Adds a lot of texture. Now if we turn that off, we just get the blacks and whites, but I'm gonna go to 4%, right? So it's nice and subtle. Next is roughen edges. We go ahead and have this open. We see that we have some keyframes here. So if I zoom out, let me scale this out a little bit. So the edges are now roughened. They're roughened up. So if we toggle this on and off, you'll see, oh, there's straight lines. Now there's, there's a little bit of roughness. The keyframes that I made on the preset are 15 seconds long. And then the border just kind of gets a little bit bigger. It's very subtle, but that's what you see happening there. So if you want something more drastic, you can just go further. That'll really bring it in, right? So it's like the thing that has like burn marks on the edges. It's nice and rough. That is a nice little tool to use, not only just on this grid, but I think it gives it some texture. So I'll go to our next one, which is Turbulent Displays. And this has a nice pairing with roughing edges, in my opinion. So by default, I have the amount at 12 and 50, which is probably what you'll mess with the most. And we'll go ahead and walk through a few examples of that. But the pairing here is you can see the rough and edges are moving with the turbulence. That's a nice little pairing if we if you want to use it. But I'll go ahead and turn off rough and edges for now. And let's mess with turbulent displays. Let me put this back to 100. Now, as far as the speed, you're going to want to mess with the keyframe and the amount of evolutions. So right now we can see this evolution counting. OK, there's eight times, nine times, ten times. So if you want it to be very subtle, maybe you go to this last keyframe and you change the evolution count. So in this case, I just wanted to do one evolution. So I'll get rid of this and let's do 360. So that's gonna tell it, hey, that's one evolution. So it's very slow as it cycles through. Now for the size, you can do the same thing. So I'm gonna scoot this over so the animation's happening a little bit faster. And now the amount, we can crank it up and that will really bend the grid. It's almost like water and reflections happening. The next is size. We can really kind of stretch out the look and have that animation go. Very bendy. This is maybe something you would have in the background, right? So that's all I would really mess with inside of Turbulent Displays if you wanted different looks. Next, we have lens distortion, my personal favorite. So we had noise and we have some movement that we could do with the other effects, but lens distortion adds a little bit of depth to the equation. So really the only parameter that I mess with is curvature. So if I go drag this to the left, we can see it kind of suck in around a camera lens, right? And if we go the other way, we can kind of have this bulge in the middle. So if you're doing this, I would, I would just remember to scale it up so it fills the frame. But again, if you go the other way, it kind of wraps around the lens. So if you use the animations that we already use, something like grid, so if I go ahead and move it over, so I'll start at the beginning, I'll move it to the left a little bit, and let's say, let's move it down. So now we have this really cool animation as if it's looping because it's moving with that lens distortion, right? Pretty cool look. Now, how can we make this a little bit better? I personally like using vignettes, and the way that I've done that is with Lumetri Color. So let's go ahead and turn that on. So now we have this nice moody space. It's nice and animated. We're moving through whatever graphics are coming on screen, and we have this happening in the background, almost like in slow motion. So what did I do inside of Lumetri Color? I simply just modified the exposure. So you'll see I just did negative two. That kind of brightens it up, but I'll put it back down so it's a little bit more moody. And then I messed with the vignette, one of my favorites. So we can toggle this on and off and you'll see the difference. We're adding kind of that dark shading on the edges. And you can modify this as well with the roundness or any of the other parameters, kind of whatever look you're going for. 
you know, it's like more of a circle, more of an oval, and then more of a square. You have different options there with the roundness. Okay, so that is the basic preset. If you made it this far in the video, thank you so much. I'm gonna show you some more options, probably some you haven't seen before. So this is a gift to you. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn off turbulent display. So I'm gonna turn on lens distortion. I'm gonna make a small modification because I like to have it kind of sucked in, something like that. I'm gonna go ahead and turn off noise for now. And then I'm gonna have this grid move left to right, kind of at a diagonal angle, but I do wanna show you some options here. So if you needed to change the size of the squares, you can do that by going to corner point in this little drop down. So now you kind of have the freedom to modify the look of the squares and the distance, but more than likely you'll probably use width slider because I do like using the anchor to have it slide, you know, up, down, left, right. So I'm gonna go ahead and make a quick animation there. Something real subtle, kind of move it, move it diagonally. So with the lens distortion, this makes it look real cool, right? It's nice and slow, changes are happening. So let's talk about the color and what's happening here at these bottom parameters inside of grid. So I'm gonna go ahead and close this up. So the border at five, for my stuff, I like to crank it down to two. Two or three is these real fine lines, right? I'll go ahead and leave it at three. That looks pretty good. So here at the color, we have invert grid and color. The color are the grid lines in this case. So if I invert it, now the color are the grid boxes, right? So we can go back and forth. So what if I had this to be black? Now the boxes are going to be black. But now if I invert this, what's going to happen? The grid lines are going to be black. And that's what they are. So that's what's happening there. The opacity, we talked about this a little bit, but if I crank it down, it's just the grid itself. So if you need something real subtle, you can do this where you can just crank down the opacity. It's real faded, it's real subtle, but I'm gonna crank this up to 100 so I can really see it. And now, ramp is below, right? So the our grid is being overlaid onto the ramp. That's why we see this color here. But what if I turn this off? We can get a really distinct look here. Oh, now look at this, this is real moody, right? It's pretty dark, so we can change the color. You know, we can have it be white, kind of like what we did before. But now you can make an animation with the gradient. That's real moody. So it's like, if I had this to be black, I can have the green come up from the end of the ramp. So if I go ahead and crank this up, we can see the green get brighter, right? So you can make an animation to where it's like breathing and moving. And then you can go both ways, the start of the ramp and the end. So now it's fading to, to black, right? pretty cool look there but what if I wanted to use an element instead of you know what if I don't even I want more colors but I have this perfect gradient that I found online right I want to use that element well you can't so instead of using ramp we're just going to use an outside element I picked wide matrix this is from Adobe libraries their catalog of web gradients so I'm going to drag wide matrix this image and I'm going to put it under our color mat all right so watch what happens. Boom. Now we have it projecting on our image. Okay. Open up color map. So what's happening here? We turned off the blending mode, right? If we do overlay, like it has nothing to project onto. It's projecting onto the color map. So we're clicking none. So we can see our image be projected through to the grid. Okay. So... This is nice. This is a nice start. And you might be wondering, well, I did like that vignette. Let me just turn it on. Not going to work because we need to add it to the image. So we'll go ahead and control C. I'll turn it off even though it's not doing anything. Go to wide matrix and then paste or control V. And now I have this moody look, right? Awesome. Looks great. And we even have an animation to go along with it. But what if I... I want the lines to project the color. Well, guess what, ladies and gentlemen, we can do that. We go into color mat and guess what? Invert the grid. This is what I love to do right here. So we have this nice moody slow-mo thing that not many people use that I've seen. I love using it. You can compound it, of course, with turbulent displace. It gives you a nice unique look. You can slow down that turbulence, but I love using it without it because I think it's very, very clean. 
And then you can mess with, you know, from here, you can just add more vignettes or make it stronger. So I'll just do control V, V. You can have it real subtle. But those are some options for you just to run it through again. I'm using the vignette and exposure settings specifically on the image. And I'm projecting our grid onto the image. That's all that that's happening. Our blending mode is at none. My opacity is at 100 because I want the grid to be present. And then I have it inverted because I want the black boxes. Where if I were to turn this off, I now have the black lines. So there you have it. If you want to collaborate with me, please check out our new paid community as well as the new additions to our course. The product page is down below. You can look at all of the updates if you decide to join and you can also see what is inside of our Discord as well. Thank you all for tuning in. I'll see you in the next one.